voting rights were not won in 1965, they're won every day through our actions. It's a continued struggle for the rights we have. There are people who limited me and my family to make us who we had to do. We're people in office. Politics determines who gets what, when, where, and how much. And so that's why I'm in this struggle. Those who are oppressing our communities are the ones in office. But the struggle continues because some form of discrimination, suppression, uh, uh, oppression has been has existed since uh, the beginning of the nation. I spent so much time as a legislator restricting the rights of people. But what does it mean? have a democracy where everybody is a participant, why is that the focus of our tax dollars and our legislative session? The attacks on voting rights in Alabama are taking place at the halls of the state legislature um, with folks in suits who say really nice things to each other, pat each other on the back, and then um, proceed with the process of taking away your right as an Alabamian and as an American. It's also about giving giving ourselves a vision for the Alabama that we love and that we want and that we know can exist and something to work towards. So we really want to emphasize with this program today is voting is important, yes, but we should also be voting in honor of those folks who would very much love to be shown up with us at the early places on November 5th and for whatever reason cannot, either physically cannot or are not allowed to by the state of Alabama. Stay informed, you have to know uh, who's on the ballot, why you want to vote, or why there's a lot of things going on that you can relate to your real life and play back into the importance of voting. If you believe this is why you should be voting, stand on it because no one can tell you why you should vote or who you should vote for. Alabama has already made it uh, nearly impossible to vote without moving, uh, and that we don't have a voting and helping someone vote absentee is illegal. Um, so that means we've got to get down to the polls ourselves and vote, and we've got to help someone else along the way. I think it's most important here in Alabama that we move after November 5th, that we move through the midterms uh, in 26, because we have opportunity here. In Birmingham, 18% of eligible voters turned out to vote for the March primaries. 18%. That's not just black and brown voters, that's all eligible voters. So since the voter turnout is low, if we move now, we have a chance. We have a chance to swing some of these elections. Particularly if we can help Dr. Brown get back in prison and register some of these incarcerated individuals, they're a captive population of eligible voters that need our encouragement, that need our support, that need their dignity as citizens of Alabama. So let's move. So what you do, I always allow people to do whatever you can do. So if you can't vote, you have votes who can. If you can't, you have votes who can. And young people have always been so for our movements. You look around at the pictures on the wall and you see that young people have always been the heartbeat and sort of the baton gets passed to your generation. And yet, in our news media and other places, we often hear about how apathetic young voters are. If your mind is telling you that you want to be the change of tomorrow, then you have to get out there and you have to be active by getting people registered to vote. Join these voting initiatives like Alabama Values, Do the Most Thing, um, SCLC, or um, Vote HBCU. They only take one step, and that's just a part of the step. And, trying to get out there and make a difference, but also get educated at the same time. We are a group of tomorrow, and if you don't keep it going, then who's going to do it for us? Yeah. So the idea behind this is that, you know, we believe that only that people keep food in this account is very good information. I think we heard that thread. Talk about that, right? And then also, we also believe who controls the narrative and controls the power. And then we also believe that if we're going to make information accessible, then we need to make it accessible. It needs to be packaged in a certain way, delivered on a certain platform, delivered from a certain person, I can trust the messengers. And so this campaign is about 50 um, students. Um, we are right now, we're on four college campuses. Um, and it's about equipping students to leverage narrative and messaging to raise awareness around issues, to post a knowledge gap, to educate both. It makes me think about you know, the 60s. 
Like when black folks are moving towards progress and looking against systems that were designed to oppress and marginalize them, right? But they had to have an imagination of what could be and what should be. And that kept them moving forward. As a comms hub, we help organizations leverage their messaging. And it's very important for me to bring up the next generation to do the same so that they can partner with organizations like the SPO community initiatives like Project Blues and people who are on the ground. So please come out and support our young folks uh, and help them do this in real time. I know that we see the running joke of like there's a felon running for the highest office. And I know it's, it's easy to, start to participate in that joke, but we are subconsciously harming an entire population of people. And we are also discouraging them from re-entering society and re-entering democracy. So our challenge is all to be cognizant in the what, 24, 23 days when we have this election, to be aware of the folks that we could be harming, even when it's not our intention, and to also encourage folks that have been disenfranchised by our democratic system to get reactivated and, and participate in. Okay? Thank y'all. Have a good one. Do the vote thing. 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 Do the vote thing.